incredible vast universe that surrounds us. Actually, not just surrounds us, but continues on out there for millions and maybe even billions of light years in every direction. But I just can't stop being overwhelmed by thoughts of a God that powerful. It happens every time I step outside of that and just stare at the heavens for a while. That's not me, but you get the idea. Well, all right, back to the point of this particular theme. In other videos you'll find on my playlist, I've spent a lot of time talking about the, just the overwhelming scientific evidence of intelligent design of the universe and of all life on this little planet of ours. There's a delicate balance of forces and laws that govern all of this majestic universe around us. We're showing you in this video only a tiny fraction of the vastness astronomers tell us is out there. Here are a few of the estimates currently. The universe spans a diameter of over 150 billion light years. The universe gives strong evidence of being fine-tuned for life on this planet by some outside powerful intelligence. The universe is not eternal. Strong evidence supports the fact that it had a first cause. Albert Einstein, late in life, wrote the following, quote, everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man, and one in the face of which we, with our modest powers, must feel humble." End quote. Well, the Bible of course agrees with him, but reveals much more to us about what Einstein only knew as a spirit vastly superior to man. In the Bible's very first book, Genesis, it states simply that the first cause of everything else in the universe was the eternal God. And maybe, could it just be that all of the awesome wonder and beauty of the stars, supernovas, black holes, vast galaxies, and objects from deep space that are yet to be discovered are simply ways God reveals his presence to the human beings he created. The heavens shout something to us, but you have to be willing to listen. Here from the Bible is an example of the ancient king who listened. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man? that you were mindful of him. Consider those lofty words of the ancient king of Israel. His name was David, and many of his beautiful psalms grace the pages of the Bible's book of psalms. It's likely that he often gazed up in wonder into the clear night skies above the rolling hills of Israel. His poetic writings clearly reveal a man who felt drawn to seek a deeper knowledge of God and to better understand him. David also wrote this in another of his Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. I can't help but wonder how much more amazed he would have been if he had been able to see these incredible, stunning photos from deep space that you're now seeing from the Hubble Space Telescope. Well, these short psalm segments will be intriguing to you if you're truly open to finding that vital connection with the eternal, all-powerful God who created you. 
But I think the awestruck words you have just heard from a man 3,000 years ago who found that connection reveal a person wanting to think deeply about his Creator and to find a special relationship with Him. In fact, many of the people quoted in both the Old and New Testaments of the Bible tell us of the high emotion that comes to those who sincerely seek answers. What kind of answers? Well, that would be answers to the deep issues of their lives, where they will be when they step out of this life into eternity. What could be more vital? What could possibly be more important to you and to every one of us on this tiny jewel of a planet embedded within a vast and amazing universe? So, in conclusion, where will this lead you? For those of you who are committed Christians, God has touched your lives in so many phenomenal ways. If you are listening now and are open to finding true, lasting peace, joy, and fulfillment in this life and the next, then the remainder of this video is offered to you. We hope it will prove to be a special gift of infinite value. Thank God that his Bible doesn't pull any punches. It says this, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. But I thank God he didn't leave us in that condition. He made a means of escape. He offers us an incredibly wonderful hope, an unimaginable gift, and that is the gift of His own Son. That hope comes when God opens our eyes for the first time to that deep, deep realization of our need for a Savior. We say to God, I am guilty, Lord, and I know I need forgiveness for my sin. Thankfully, there is hope. You can also cling to that hope that leads out of eternal judgment and out of darkness away from the presence of God forever. But this hope which we share now in clear detail is that wonderful gift available to you if you choose to reach out and actually take it. For the true Christian, we have already been judged and had our sin debt marked canceled at the cross of Calvary. Christians are not the good people, they're just the forgiven people. And when you realize you deserve nothing, you're probably ready for God to give you everything. And that is the gift and the blessing of eternal life through repentance and faith in Jesus. Jesus Christ. But it may just be for you that your judgment is still up ahead if you don't radically change the course of your life. Well, as you've just heard, that all-important change of life direction many of you need to take now starts with the realization of the sin virus, so to speak, that infects the whole human race. And the beauty and wonder 
of being given forgiveness is the result of Jesus' payment for that sin debt so that we do not have to face the judgment of God who created us. So as we close now, consider these liberating words of promise given by Jesus Christ himself in the Gospel of John to all people who are willing to listen. There they are. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. And truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And lastly, he said, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, no one will snatch them out of my hand. What amazing, incredible promises. We hope that you'll come to Christ, cling to those promises, receive him and receive that free, wonderful gift of eternity, eternal life with the God who created you.